Good afternoon, and welcome to episode 765. And the topic today is um, very relevant, actually, for this week, which is fireworks and, and earthquakes are they metaphors for your love life? I'll explain it and I can help. So before I jump into that and break that down, because you may already go, I know what you mean by that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I'm here um, and why I do these talks. My name is Barry Selby. I am a, I'm the author of a best-selling book. I'm a best-selling author, best-selling book. It gets confusing. Called 50 Ways to Love Your Lover. It's 50 Principles for Healthy Relationships for Men and Women, Couples and Singles. I'll put a link in the comments after I sign off. So you can check that out. And I'm also um, an inspirational speaker and relationship attraction expert. Basically, I'm a coach who also speaks. Um, and I help women create balance in love, life, and business. And that's also driven because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine and then helping women own their lives and live their lives in fullness is kind of my drive, my passion, my service. And it's also why I started these talks that I did over two years ago called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. So today we're episode number 765, so quite a few under my belt now. And the topic again today is fireworks and earthquakes. Are they metaphors, met, are they metaphors for your love life? Because I, I've been sitting with this thing about wanting to talk about, so let me just tell you that I was really not sure the title of this until about three minutes ago <laughs> and if you watch my broadcast you know I don't have a script a plan or an agenda when I do them well sometimes it's sometimes an agenda but no plan it's more about what the topic is at the time and today because we've had over the last couple of days lots of fireworks in fact the whole week's been fireworks even though Thursday was officially um, Independence Day and today's Saturday so that's two days ago and also we have we have had earthquakes both on on July 4th and July 5th so yesterday and the day before um, yeah, interesting experiences. And having lived in LA for a few years, this is not the first time I've been through earthquakes. So that doesn't that doesn't uh, doesn't thrill me. Doesn't scare me as much as it did. But it's still concerning. But I want to use this in the because it's so obvious. Use these two things as metaphors for relationships because you know there's jo jokes people say about you know in the bedroom it's fireworks. Like well yes it's it's excitement it's fun it's it's lots of bright lights and great sounds and everything else in the bedroom and in life when you have a great relationship. And then, of course, there's the earthquakes, which in some cases can be devastating traumas and tragedies, but also, um, what's what we're looking for? Um, destruction of trust can also be an earthquake experience in a relationship too. Now, some earthquakes are just speed bumps where you can get over them and you can move on. And some of them are life-changing and ending of relationships. So I'll speak to that a little bit more because the, the fireworks part is kind of easy because fireworks are basically, it means fun, joyful, celebration, you know, everyone's yelling yippee and it's all great stuff, most of the time. Of course, no, I won't go there. I might go there later, okay. However, earthquake, <coughs> earthquakes have a different, different um, impact and need for attention in relationships. So again, the idea about the earthquake, the metaphor, the metaphor of an earthquake is basically something that, sh that shudders or, or um, doesn't shatter necessarily, but certainly um, disrupts the peace of the relationship. And oftentimes it's a surprising experience for one, if not both, and can be very challenging. But the thing about it is it's not always the end of a relationship. And like earthquakes, there's different scales of on the Richter scale of what those levels can be. So it can be something that will destroy the building or I might just shake a few paintings off the wall. So there's a range in this case. So in this context, I want to talk about, I guess what I'm talking about because I didn't plan on this, the dysfunction of relationships when you don't choose to deal with those earthquakes because sometimes people will tend to pretend nothing happened. Meaning that something happened where maybe one of the partners cheated or maybe there was a a, a, as I said before, destruction of trust, which could have been the cheating or something else. And either one or both partners just gloss over and pretend it never happened. With earthquakes, you can do that if it's a light, if it's a mild one, but if it's a deep one, when there's cracks in the walls, you gotta do some repair work. And if you're in a relationship and you're not doing the repair work, doing the repair work, then you're likely to basically build up more and more sabotage in your foundations of a relationship. I mean, in some ways an earthquake is, if you imagine relationships like a house, because in a lot of ways it is a structure you build with your partner, ideally equal partners, I talked about that one before, then an earthquake is threatening to that. And, it can, and in this context, the earthquake is usually brought, upon, brought, brought on by one of the partners. Obviously an earthquake usually is a natural disaster, not created by man, at least we don't think it is. 
So when you have an earthquake happen, you have some choices. Do you abandon the house? Do you do repair work? Or do you live in the house as if nothing happened, pretending it was okay? In relationship, same things apply. Is it something where the trust was so violated that you decided you had to quit the relationship and leave? Because in some cases, that's the best thing to do. Do you do things to repair that broken trust and restore connection, intimacy, and um, trust, so, trust, of course, so you can have the relationship work again? Or do you just continue on as if nothing happened? Those are basically the three, lo- three places I want to talk about because really, in relationships, after something bad, in quotes, happens, again, some earthquake in the relationship happens, there's going to be options of how to respond. And one of those responses is to ignore what happened and continue on, which I do not recommend very, very vehemently because more than one time I've seen relationships attempt to bury something. I'm going to use another, another, another analogy right now. And in relationships, oftentimes what people do is they have a problem that shows up in the relationship between them, them each other because one person did something or didn't do something or there's an issue where the trust got violated. And then it's tempted to be basically ignored and moved on, but you don't ignore that stuff. What happens is like a beach ball, yes, another analogy, underwater, you can push it down and pretend it doesn't, doesn't matter, but the pressure continues underwater with the beach ball trying to come up to the surface and it will stay in that place so it becomes strenuous and efforting to keep that issue under wraps. Most relationships cannot and will not survive that. Now you can pretend it's okay, but it means that pressure's still under the surface, that beach ball's still being held down, and at some point in time, something else will happen. There'll be almost like putting a second beach ball on top of the first one, and it's gonna come out. And when that happens, you'll have basically no choice because at that point, you've let it go too far. And this is the challenge of this, is when the problems are small at the beginning, it's better to deal with them then than let them accumulate. And I'm going to have to do another analogy again. <laughs> I'm keep throwing analogies at you. So earthquakes, beach balls. Let me throw a third one at you just to give you another piece to consider. Is when, <laughs> if you don't deal with the problem at the beginning, like... Um, like a snowball round running down the hill. I'm going to throw analogies at you. What, what the hey? I know it's the middle of summer here, but there is snow in some parts of the Sierra still. Um, the snowball will start to gather momentum and gather more snow. So it becomes, a, it starts as a snowball and becomes an avalanche. And if you don't deal with the issues early on when they show up, like an avalanche, you'll get wiped out by it. These analogies are pretty good. I'm discovering. Okay. So the avalanche worked, the snowball to avalanche, the earthquake. And the and the beach ball. Okay, so those are three ideas. I'm, I mean, I'm throwing visuals at you because it's just what comes up for me. So hopefully, these are giving you some resonance because when it, when I'm teaching these, if I just say what the truth is and the thing about relationship having issues, you may not relate to that. But if I talk about these ideas in metaphorical terms, I'm hoping this is resonating for you because if they are, great. Because this is kind of one of those simple things I'm trying to explain that people ignore. And hopefully, you're not one of those people. Hopefully, you. Look at relationships as a place you want to do the work to grow and become aware and have a relationship that is with somebody else who's aware and awake so you can grow together. Whether you're growing or not, stuff comes up. Stuff being the issues and challenges of relationships, including trust issues too. If you're growing, there's a conscious intention to face that, to work with it, and to resolve it so you can move even higher in the relationship. If you're not growing, it's sometimes easier to try and ignore it and suppress it. Again, the beach ball. But like the snowball, it becomes the avalanche if you can keep going. Meaning that if you don't deal with it when it's coming up initially, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And when it does come up the next time, it could be a whole lot more devastating to your relationship. So my guidance here, so to speak, to drop all the the metaphors right now, is when stuff happens, talk about it then. It sounds so simple, but most people don't do it. They're like, I'll sleep on it, I'll talk about it tomorrow. And then a week goes by or a month goes by and nothing happens. When something happens that violates trust, safety, comfort in that relationship, have a conversation with your partner. It's, it sounds so simple, but it really is that simple. It's not always easy, but it's important to deal with that because frankly, your relationship can only be saved if you face stuff together and you grow together. If you ignore it and suppress it, your relationship is doomed to fail at some point. It may be 20 years down the road, but it will fail. And if you don't do the repair work, and you just ignore it, it's going to fall apart as well. So 
I said it's kind of the same thing in a way. So my point is really simple, is if you want more fireworks in your relationship, deal with the earthquakes early on. Is that good enough? Is that good enough? Yes. I think it works. <laughs> that, was, that was the way the metaphor came out. But the truth is, if you want to have a great time in your relationship, make your relationship strong. Make your relationship healthy. Make sure your relationship deals with those things that show up that get in the way of the relationship. So you can have more love, more joy, more trust, more connection. And that's when the real fireworks can happen. I think I've, I think I've, I've uh, drained that analogy enough or that, that metaphor enough. So my point is simple. If, you, if you're not in a relationship, then I suggest you might want to do some work before that because this conversation I'm talking about really happens when you're in a relationship. However, oftentimes those issues that cause the disruption of trust, the disruption of connection, are things that you've, been, that you've been carrying around or your partner's been carrying around for many, many times before. And when you're single, it's a great time to work on it so you don't have to carry it into that relationship. So knowing what happened in your past relationships is a good guiding system to tell you where you're going and where you're not going. And my point is, is kind of simple in this sense because if this stuff comes up in a relationship, oftentimes it was something you've known about before. It wasn't a surprise. It was a surprise maybe it happened this time because it, like, it happened the last three times. It shouldn't happen this time. Not true. That I talked about before in other talks about the serialization of relationships where you repeat the same thing again and again with a different partner. So if you're single now and you notice the same thing keeps happening and you don't want to do it again in the next relationship, that's a good time to get some support, get some help, get some guidance. I offer my services in that place because this is my talk so I can do that. So we'll put a link in the back end besides the book is a, is a discovery session with me or I should say a complimentary clarity conversation with me, the triple C, because it is a clarity conversation. So you can get some clarity and guidance of where you want to go, what you want to do, and see if you want to work together. So that'll put in the comments with the book as well because both of those will help you get more clarity, more direction, and learn how to deal with the earthquakes so you can have more fireworks. I think I've drained that metaphor enough. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, almost every day, sometimes like on July 4th, I did it a bit earlier because I was already playing by five o'clock. So 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. You can find me here. Watch me, follow me. If you want to find somewhere around this broadcast, there's a button or a, a three dots. You can click on that to say you'd be notified next time we go live. Um, the replays go to my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. And you can watch all the replays there in, different, in uh, reverse order from newest, newest to oldest. Um, that's not as easy to do as it is on YouTube, frankly. My YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby also, you can find my, all my social media is my name, Barry Selby. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's a playlist on, playlist on there called Messages and Masculine. That directory is easier to scan through for titles than it is on Facebook, just to be transparent. So having said all that, if you have any questions, thoughts about this broadcast, please you can comment below or you can message me or you can fill out the form that I, uh, the link with the link I put in the comments. Because this is something important. You don't need to have earthquakes in your relationships, especially if you do the work first to stop the things that trigger the earthquakes. That's the lesson, by the way. So with that, I thank you for watching. This is my daily chat. As I mentioned, I do this again every day. Sorry, I, I do this every day, seven days a week, so I'm back in tomorrow as well. And um, I'm here to help. This is my passion, my service, my work. And if you're not getting what you want in love and relationships, it's time to get some help. And that's what I'm here for. So with that, I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. And as always, I invite you to take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon. Bye.